uh, the Tennessee game. Um, Tennessee is 2-0. and They beat Virginia and then Austin P. Uh, didn't look great uh, in probably either game. Pulled away from Virginia there in the third, uh, second half of the third quarter and fourth quarter. Uh, didn't look great against Austin P. But again, Silk, you mentioned it. Head coach Josh Heupel is probably one of, if not uh, the best offensive coaches in college football right now. Give us kind of what you guys have seen, read about, uh, about Tennessee in, in, in this game this weekend. <clears throat> I like I what I've D- seen from him. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> I, I think T- I think Tennessee, kind of like Florida. I don't know that anyone, you know, in particular on Florida's defense is going to be an All SEC player. And I think the improvement we've talked about about Florida's defense is the depth and and you're being able to rotate guys, keep guys fresh. It'll be interesting to see if they have the opportunities to rotate as much as they have, just with the pace that Tennessee runs their offense. Um, but Tennessee's deeper. I think Tennessee's offense was terrible last year and, and they've gotten deeper they're doing the same kind of things that that florida is keeping guys Tennessee's fresh, offense was terrible defense, last year? defense oh defense i'm sorry defense their defense uh and obviously as as you've mentioned a couple times now dan the the pace of play um that florida plays with will allow and the way that they rotate players in and out will allow tennessee to rotate more defensively than i think florida will be able to uh against Some, the balls Something interesting, Nick, Tennessee has only had 11 more offensive plays this season than the Gators have. They've scored more. Well, I guess you have 49 plays, uh, long drives against McNeese. Um, But Virginia did go and lose to James Madison. Uh, I've been told James Madison is a great program. Um, The Dukes. Sure. Uh, But I I don't know (laughs) what to make about that win. Uh, over Virginia when they turn around the following week and, and lose to James Madison. So yeah. it, uh, I think for me, it's going to be a matchup. Can Florida run the ball? Um, I'm getting more and more trust in Graham Mertz to not turn the ball over. Now this is a, a big difference in competition. This Tennessee team is one that most people pick to finish second to Georgia in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I feel good about Florida's chances. I'm interested to know, you know, well, I'll ask Billy Napier later today. How do they treat these games? Do they treat these games differently? In my opinion, nameless, you know, faceless. It's nameless, faceless, shut up. This is Tennessee week. Uh, it's Georgia week. It's LSU week. It's Florida State week. Those games are different than, hey, Arkansas is coming in. Even mm-hmm. though Arkansas is an SEC opponent, you shouldn't have the same feeling. You should have some hate in your heart this week um, if you're in either locker room. Um, so how do you handle this week? Is it an emphasis that it's Tennessee? And, and listen, I don't expect Billy Napier to say, yeah. Uh, but it, at least privately behind closed doors, you don't need to do it in front of the microphone, you know, behind the podium. But I think you should be treating these games these weeks differently. Yeah, you got to turn up the, the intensity a little bit. Um. I don't know what the key to this be. I just got to. I just think we play defense will be fine. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of the offense. Run game is. Just, I already said a lot of this, but run game is going to be super important. Uh, establishing that we got away from it too fast. Trey Wallace said the same thing from the Utah. That was my take. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought we was getting. I know we was getting five a pop the first half, but carries of seven and, and three between Montra and Etienne just not going to get it done. You're not going to be balanced, and you don't. We can't survive, and no team is going to survive. We said this last year with AR. He shouldn't have been throwing 40-plus passes, mm-hmm. uh, and damn sure Graham Mertz shouldn't be either. Um, so we just got to be balanced on offense. Um, offensive line needs to protect Graham, needs to execute, uh, needs some leadership in the offensive line. We're pointing out you know, blitzes, disguise blitzes, whatever it may be, um, but protection of the quarterback, controlling the turnovers is going to be super key. Uh, we need more young wide receivers to separate. Mm-hmm. I do like the the the, the whatever I, what I've seen out of the receivers um, so far. It's gonna be curious. I think we gotta watch Jaquavion Frazier. I think he only got three snaps this last game, so he may be on transfer watch as well. Uh, but the young wide receivers is you know time to grow up. Um, we'll see what Eugene Wilson could do. I already got him as my X factor. Uh, Shamar James and Scooby Williams have just mm-hmm. been a pair of dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think this is a game that they're they're gonna be the banking on their running game to get off this week. Uh, Joe Milton is going to struggle in that loud stadium. It's the swamp. It's going to be rocking. Second home game, rivalry. I, I don't think Joe Milton's built to to survive a, a swamp in a defense that we got right now. But 
if Scooby Williams and, and Shamar come in locked in on their game like they have been week one and week two and we shut down their run game, uh, we could get a couple of interceptions and run away with mm -hmm. this thing. But um, it's going to be key. We just got to take care of business. I also think the SEC East is wide open. You know, it's a lot of teams struggling. We we struggled week one, look, look incompetent and a little, you know, disorganized. But I watched Kentucky play. I watched Tennessee play. I'm watching Georgia play. Um, this this league, college football itself, it's a lot of parity. It's wide open. We just got to take care of football on our end. You know, grow up fast. We don't have a senior on our three deep on defense. Um, that bodes well for the future. Um, but it also puts things in perspective that we're a very young team. Mm -hmm. But they flying around, they getting to it. And give me more TJ Searcy and more Kelvin Collins early in this game. Give me that energy. I just like the energy of TJ Searcy. That's my guy mm -hmm. right now, my favorite player on defense right now. Play the mm. young boy. Yeah, no, Silk, I think you hit the nail on the head. And Tom Gore said, thank you, Silk. Somebody's got to keep this stuff real. Uh, Silk has always been been one of the realists. He keeps it real in the Ville. Um, Depends on who you're talking to. And ill in the Ville, right? Um, so a couple yeah. of things. I think you guys uh, really uh, hit all of the – uh, nails on the head there. We talked about third down defense that the Gators have been playing uh, this year. I think that that's going to be important. Tennessee's only 8 of 25. Uh, they went 3 of 12 on third down against Austin P. So, again, making sure that you force those, those uh, third down uh, into fourth down conversions for them. Um, and then, again, in the red zone, uh, trying to limit them. Tennessee has scored on all but one uh, of the times that they've been in the red zone, so trying to keep them out of that. And then the rushing attack. Uh, Tennessee has six rushing touchdowns uh, on the season. Joe Milton's numbers are relatively pedestrian for playing Virginia and Austin P. Uh, but their rushing attack has been solid this year. So, again, Silk, you mentioned your Shamar James, uh, your TJ Searcy's, and then this is the game that I'd really like to see a coming out party for Princely if he's going to have one, um, has been pretty under the radar, did get a sack uh, last game, but want to see a little bit more out of him, want to see us get after Joe Milton, force him to throw the ball because I just don't think that he's – that accurate and i don't think that he if you force him to throw the ball that tennessee's gonna win this game but i want to see that push there and then i want to make sure that we're not abandoning the run obviously we saw montreal johnson have an incredible game uh against um against mcneese state you know trevor etn and, and Trayon webb had good games as well but obviously they showed that they have that ability if you block and you allow them to get into the open field to make an impact in the game so don't abandon that run make it a balanced offense. I think that Graham Mertz, Silk, I think that you made a good point uh, to Trey. I, I think they have the ability to move the ball down the field with Graham Mertz at quarterback. Now it's a matter of making sure that you keep the pace uh, in the right spot and that you also have that ability to go to the running backs uh, when needed uh, in this game. Um, but I, I really do like Florida's chances. You know, Tennessee, obviously, I, you know, if you would have asked me before the season, I would have thought that Tennessee was going to probably win this game. Now you'll find out here in a few minutes what my pick is, but I'm not as bullish on Tennessee as I uh, as I was before the season started. All right, gentlemen, uh, we are getting towards the end. The line right now is a little bit all over the place. So I expect yeah. these lines to bounce a bit as well. Um I've seen the Gators plus seven. I've seen the Gators plus four and a half, four and a half. Um, we'll split that somewhat in the middle. Let's make our own line of Gators uh, plus five and a half. Um, Nick, you taking the Gators plus five and a half? Florida wins outright. So yeah, I'll take the points, but I'm taking the money line. Who right. is this guy? I don't know who this is. Y'all brought on my show. I'm with, we got a drug test or, or, or investigate. Oh. Let's send some people oh. over to Nick's house and make sure it's, Wait till Kentucky week. I'll disappoint you. Kentucky is looking more mid than Tennessee, so you're going to have to really figure something out here, Nick. They, they, if we beat Tennessee, I'm going to start lying. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> I'm going to start lying. I think, Flor lie. I think Florida, listen, I've watched I've watched Tennessee get real creative losing in Gainesville. Um, I'm expecting, you know, uh, in my negative Nick days, like uh, 88,000 last week. Okay. Sure, Jan. Um, I Pick expect, cold, baby. yeah, I expect 88,000 plus um, in the swamp. Um, it, the swamp is a cathedral. Mass is at seven. I think uh, people will start their own Holy Communion around 7 a.m. Like, it's going to be a rowdy, rowdy crowd. Um, yeah, last week, baby. last week gave you enough um, to feel good about this matchup. 
Um, I expect a, a crazy crowd. I don't think it, listen, this is going to be Joe Milton's first real road game. I mean, I know they played in Nashville week one, but that's you're just down the road. So it's a two hour drive. Um, it's a whole different ball game. Uh, I like Florida to win this game. Take the points if you want, but money line yeah. pays more. Again, this is not betting advice in real life, but up the bets, you know, outright win. I got Florida, of course, I'm covering the spray. I, I think we win at home. We'll see what's up. I you like got that take still. I like the Gators money line too, but I'll take the five and a half. I'll take the seven. I'll take the four and a half. I like the Gators to beat Tennessee this week. Over under 58 and a half. Over or under. And a half? Over no, under. 58 Point. and a half is over that's under that's total that's game. Oh, right. I was about to points. say what? Well, they expecting a, a real shootout here, bro. <laughs> Something I don't know. Uh, I'll take the over. Oh, Nick, over. over. What do you? We, we got you got any more? Oh, can I ask you guys a question? That's it. That ends that segment. So, oh, All just right. quickly before we do that, before you ask her question, uh, game is at seven o'clock. No, game day will not be there. Uh, wear blue. That shouldn't be something that has to uh, be reminded against Tennessee, but wear blue uh, against Tennessee. So, your question. Oh, people are coming at me. I, I said, like, last, I was like, hey, just like letting you know, Florida said to wear blue. Um, I was like, it hasn't really worked in the past. And people are like, well, they don't do it. Like, getting defensive about it. I'm like, listen, dude. You you watched on TV or you were in the stands. Like it, it didn't work when they said to wear white last week. Like I'm not I'm not opining anything, but to me, intuitive. When Kentucky's in Gainesville, you wear orange or you wear white. You don't wear blue. When Tennessee's in Gainesville, you wear blue or you wear white. You don't wear orange. Like that's just intuitive to me. So uh, they have done it well in the past. That that South Carolina game is the first one I remember. I think that was 2010. The the blue out they had. Um, shout out to Arrested Development. Um, we just want everybody color coded so if things go array, you don't get beat up, you know, like ooh. you're in the right <laughs> you're in the right colors. You know, if you're in orange, yeah. we see you from behind, we start mugging Tennessee fans, we think, and then oh man, it's one of our own. I'm no just friendly joking. fire. Yeah, no friendly fire if you got on blue. So y'all wear blue. All right, so you got a question? What goes what 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 goes wrong if, if, if for us to like what does Tennessee have to do to win? That's why I want to ask y'all. Like, what, what do we do wrong? How do we lose this game? Um, you, you're going to lose the turnover battle, um, which, you know, Graham Mertz, I, only one interception, um, but hasn't even really had too many close calls. Uh, interceptions were a big problem last, last year. So if Florida can't run the ball and you get into – you get behind the sticks and you get into obvious passing situations, how does Graham Mertz do throwing under pressure – does he start to put too much on himself? His first SEC game as well. It's going to be uh, a, a great crowd. They'll be quiet when he's on the field at least. But what does Graham Mertz do if it gets into a situation where Tennessee's winning and now they're, they've won, or winning on the scoreboard and winning in their game plan, forcing Graham Mertz to win a game with his arm? If Florida loses the turnover battle, if Graham Mertz has a couple of interceptions, I just don't think Florida, one, is built to come from behind and two, not built to, um, you know, withstand uh, losing a turnover battle and winning a game. Mm. Um, I think that that's, that's good. Uh, I think it, it really rests on the offensive line. We saw a big improvement uh, last week, but we have to see that continued improvement and maturation of that offensive line. You get Kingsley walking back, that certainly helps. But I think that this game – both running the ball and passing the ball, so reliant on them not being turnstiles. We saw it against Utah that they just didn't look very good. Hopefully with that continued coaching and improvement, they look better. But if that offensive line isn't able to protect and the rest of the offense uh, can't operate, and that's that's how Florida shoots itself in the foot this game. Yeah, I think running the ball is super important. If we can't get the run game off, I think it get a little weird. As, as Every game we've seen Billy coach win. <laughs> We, we haven't been able to run the ball, and we're throwing the ball 40 times a game. This is not a winning uh, formula. Uh, and, again, I think scoring first, you know, playing with a lead, they, the defense plays different. 
uh, the the game, the time of the games, like playing with a lead, the way the new time is set up is is beneficial to, to have a lead and play with a lead, especially mm-hmm. when we taking our sweet ass time as far as time management. So I think the time management is going to be very key to all of this scoring first. And then, you know, if you're playing with a lead, you know, that urgency is a little bit different. And, and I don't think Billy's in a hurry to do anything. So I want the lead. I think that's very important. I like that. I like that. Uh, gentlemen, any final thoughts before we get out of here? No, I don't got no more thoughts, man. You know, check finals. Finals this weekend. Hit yeah. my DMs up if you're in town for the Tennessee game. Uh, we shoot our vlog. If you haven't checked it out, check the Roll Up Networks page as well. We have mm-hmm. a vlog from Miami, vlogs from Florida State. This is going to be our Gator vlog this week. We'll share it on. Um, Stadium Miguel and also the roll up page, so you can check those out. But we're gonna be in town. I think Randy Russell's riding up with me, so me and him will be in town together. It'll be some more Gators that I'm linking up with. Uh, we'll see if we can link up with Jinx, he's gonna be in town, Jack Rabbit. So we're gonna be vibing a little bit. Make the visual, we shooting 4K. Shout out to my guy Lion. Uh, we're trying to get off of the screen yard and do more things in person and engage with the fans and the community. So find us, yeah, That's please it. do. Yeah, Silk, Silk mentioned it. We will let you guys know where we're at. Uh, but please hit us up on Twitter uh, if or Instagram if you're looking for us. We are going to be there. We're going to be there for a long time on Saturday before the game starts. And would love to meet as many of you as possible. Uh, and finally, if you are going to Gainesville, please go swing by Alumni Hall. Go visit them on Archer Road right after you get off of 75. Go visit them. Latest and greatest in all Florida Gators wear, apparel, accessories, uh, grilling accessories, all that kind of fun stuff that you might need for your tailgate. Uh, or if you are looking for a blue shirt, because maybe you only have an orange shirt, that's okay. Alumni Hall will have one for you in stock. Go check them out on Archer Road or alumnihall.com. And we will see you guys at the same corner, same time next week. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Buy from the sponsors here. And we'll see you guys next week. You get a song? Oh, yeah. Song of the week. It was me um, last week. So I guess it's me. Um, mm-hmm. Let's yeah, I'm gonna see. I'm going to skip the try, bro. I should have just oh. let you skip the try. You know? Oh, man. No, 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 no. Uh, Tyler Childers put out a new album this weekend, which uh, mm. everybody I know was on pins and needles waiting for. Uh, so we'll go with Tyler Childers' new song uh, called R- Rustin in the Rain. So... Uh, We'll see you guys at the same corner, same time next week. And find a set of tailgate. Go Gators.